as we look out, you know, we see uh, more and more, uh, uh, well, we do actually, now to the north of our location, we see some bright flashes of light on the ground, and now due west of, uh, of where we are, there, there's more fire going up. There's a bomb that has come down now. You'll probably hear the report of the refinery in just a minute. We saw the bomb come down. We saw the flash, and you just heard the explosion. And uh, it was a big blast of uh, <laughs> bomb blast that came through this window. Uh, I'm going to back away from the window now. I'll still try to get a view for you, but uh, that was a rough one for me. It was very far away, and I'm sure it was not dangerous, but it, certainly, it was the, uh, the biggest blast of air that I felt from a, from a bomb so far. Peter? You know, that could have been as heavy as a 2,000-pound bomb. The windows in the hotel room have held. Maybe they are bulletproof. Maybe they're also bombproof. The waves are coming basically every 15 minutes now. It seems maybe three, four planes. They're unloading their hardware and then heading off. These pilots, these American pilots, are flying through a lot of flak, a lot of anti-aircraft fired from the ground. The gunners are firing a lot, but they don't, the U.S. planes don't seem to be targeting any of the anti-aircraft weaponry. At this point, they seem intent on hitting specified targets and then getting on their way. John? Peter, could, could the reason that they're not worried about the anti-aircraft fire be that the planes are flying high enough so that the anti-aircraft fire wouldn't be effective against them anyway? Uh, no, I, I think it would be too difficult to try and figure out where the anti-aircraft fire is, John, at this yeah. point. Yeah. Don't forget, this is, seems to be a strategic attack on Baghdad. It is not preparation. I would think for a ground assault, so there is uh, less need to specifically knock off every weapon that's going up to you. Uh -huh. right, Peter, I'm going to go back to the window because I see some bright light off to uh, in one direction from our location, and I see uh, more and more air bursts. It looks like there are a uh, hundred fireflies off in the southwest of where we are now. It's just that, and the fireflies are flashing brightly one after another. It's a uh, it's really quite, it's like sparklers on the 4th of July at a great, great distance, many miles away from where we are. The blast that came through this window a few minutes ago was very much like the first blast you feel when you're out at the uh, countdown clock at Cape Canaveral for a space shuttle launch. It was just a powerful wave of hot air that came into our location here, and the sky is still alight. We see some more anti-aircraft rounds going off one by one. There's no great noisy barrage of anti-aircraft in Baghdad now. But um, we do still see things, and I'm going to look out the window and see if I can see where this bright light is coming from. I, uh, I actually can't. It's uh, in the direction, I guess, generally to the south of where we are, but I just, uh, because of the way the hotel is built, I can't see around enough to, to tell you precisely what, where the bright light's coming from. Yeah, it could be anywhere away to the, the, the south of the west there, John. It's, uh, the skies are lit up frequently, and uh, out there somewhere, there was a terrible pounding going on, and it seems to be much more serious than it is here in the center city. And uh, it has been continuing now for about an hour and a half, and uh, obviously the U.S. Air Force is serious about its mission here tonight. Absolutely. And there could be some planes from other coalition members as well. Um, we have another, I won't call this a lull, but, uh, well, there's an airburst directly, not directly overhead, but it's visible up in the sky rather than down on the ground out in the southwestern direction generally from where we are. And uh, as I look out, Peter? What I think is very eerie about this, John, is that quite a few of the explosions, most of them haven't been accompanied by the sound of aircraft. I don't know if we're getting cruise missiles coming in here, or uh, and th that is uh, guided cruise missiles, or these planes are flying very high. We did hear at least two or three aircraft come over the low over the hotel, but we really don't know where all this uh, flak, all this, all this bombing is coming from, and I get the impression that the anti-aircraft fire is all over the sky. They don't seem to have much idea either, John. Yeah, and I think we we might be able to hear something if, uh, and we do hear something now. Uh, more, uh, I think this is probably uh, coalition airplane fire again. There's a loud rushing sound, like the sound of a jet engine nearby, and a, a lot of anti-aircraft going up after it, but. Uh, no sign of any um, uh, any connection between the anti-aircraft fire on the ground and the skies above. I'll, uh, I'll attempt to get back to the window and have another look out and see what I can see down below. And uh, well, you can hear it echoing off the concrete uh, buildings in downtown Baghdad. And the, it could even be that some of the echoes that we're hearing now are from the area of the Tigris River, which is very near where we're located. Um, 
you, you can hear some more sound of anti-aircraft fire. And, uh, Peter, that sound that we just heard with the echo after it, was that, uh, is, did that sound to you like an airplane sound? No, I, I, I think it's just anti-aircraft fire. They've got, they've got Russian weapons here. They've got all manners of, of, of equipment, of which I'm not overly familiar with, uh, John. So it could be, they're just noises in the night in one sense. <laughs> exactly. Noises that we're not too pleased.